Hi and welcome to another video for linmob.net. Today I have two pine phones here and I'm both are uh, of the two different community editions that have already been shipped which is the post market one uh, here and the UB ports edition. Now I just inserted an SD card and on that SD card is a fresh copy of Manjaro with Fosh Alpha 4. I think they just call it Manjaro Fosh Alpha 4. So it's their fourth Alpha and it's the first one that is supposed to support these uh, 3 gigabyte RAM convergence edition devices that come with that uh, little um, connector or dock if you want to call it like that. I'm just trying to find it but I of course didn't put it on the table but yeah uh, you've seen it in other videos I think. If not uh, yeah it's not that interesting. It just has two USB-A connectors and one HDMI and you can try to use your Pine phone as a computer with that thing. So now why do I have my two pine phones here and you see that I uh, somehow have hands that are I don't know smudgy yeah it's summer sorry for that um, I have Arch Linux I'm on this one and I'm just going to uh, trying to go through oh what's happened here yeah there it is it's the first boot so this will likely be faster later. Also keep in mind b because um, app start times are not going to be impressive here um, that this is running of the SD card. So we're limited to about uh, 30 megabytes per second if I'm not completely mistaken. Read speed. Uh, if you remember the bad old days of notebook hard drives you may uh, and and you replaced one of those notebook hard drives with an SSD or if you went from an S ATA, H, S -ATA uh, SSD to an NVMe one you will also know that slow IO really slows down app start and this is what happen happens here too so it will be a bit p faster from the EMMC, which is at least for the 16 gigabyte version at about 80 megabytes. For comparison, a good uh, SATA SSD is at, I don't know, like 500 megabytes per second. And an NVMe SSD should be around uh, three gigabytes per second. So yeah. It's not just the CPU, which uh, isn't the fastest, but, but it's also the, the storage that really uh, slows down app start. So I'm just going to uh, log into my little demo uh, network here, because I'm going to that first run visit, because I figure that would be interesting to see, because if you're getting this uh, Manjaro community edition I'm pretty sure it's going to ship with Fosh because Plasma Mobile currently is too much of a moving target and Lomiri well uh, they are going to ship in early November as far as I know so they would have to finish the image to be flashed on the units maybe at in mid-October at last and I don't think that uh, Manjaro can bring Lomiri to the level that Fosh is uh, in less than a month. So I'm just going to log into my next cloud here. Um, I'm sorry I will not <laughs> show you that because I don't want any uh, sc script kitty to attack my next cloud server. Sorry for that but um, I will show you something else again. I'm just using a test account here so I should be able if it uh, things things properly uh, I should be able to demo some different things here later on. 
So I hope it's connecting. Because I'm really good at mistyping passwords. So I noted earlier noticed earlier while I set this up. Yeah, so that worked and now I'm going to have to choose a password for the keyring. That's like a GNOME keyring and I'm going to choose something short and easy to type for this purpose. Um, because yeah. And now I have to confirm it. Okay. And next, yeah, so now let's start using Manjaro Arm. We saw this screen before and somehow I apparently touched Unbox here, which, well, just ignore this phone. Uh, now we have a ton of apps pre-installed here, um, starting with uh, the game 2048 which actually works quite nicely, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. Um, we have here, up here, the phone app, um, which looks like this and um, yeah, generally works. So um, I will just, by the way, I will just briefly demo receiving a call here. because otherwise I'm going to forget that. So see, receiving calls, it rings at least in this state, so yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to answer it here and I haven't actually tested whether calls work, but actually uh, while trying to demo that before, I noticed that my microphone didn't really pick it up. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, I decided to not to try that again for now. Um, so that's the calls up. And then we have chats, uh, which is the SMS ap application. I don't have any old SMS here apparently. And can I try to I don't know whether my contacts thing. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have think that, but I'm going to show you in, s in the settings of this uh, that there are several options of accounts you can add to this XMMP or Jabber, Matrix, Telegram. Uh, Log in with user ID and password. Um, for Telegram, you don't have a password, you're just receiving that notice like if you were, like you're when you're adding another device and then you're entering the number there's password. Uh, then this here is GNOME Web or Epiphany and this is the context app. So okay yeah that's really now I chose my my newly created Nextcloud account but apparently it didn't pull down the contacts yet because I created two contacts but I'm just going to show you um, hopefully how to create another contact yeah so we can now just type a name here maybe well how about just kidding <laughs> adding our math uh, Look at that, a crash. Yeah. That's interesting. But that was just force crashing and <laughs> we should be back in no time. Yes, here we go. Now let me try that again. And you see, I've got two contacts here and one is called landline and I'm just gonna call landline And as you can hear and see, that works. And now I hope I didn't leak too much of my number. And then there's another contact, which is Alf. And Alf, uh, well, serves as a demo character here to show you what uh, 
the functions are. So yeah, it's just uh, pretty pretty nice. So I, I didn't miss any features there. Now Anbox is something I'm not going to touch in this video because it takes long and I did a video on Anbox and yeah. Uh, I can make another video on Anbox or Manjaro later on if you want please uh, comment if you want to see that. Archive Manager is uh, just what you would think. It's something to extract zip files and stuff. And now we're getting a notice that software updates are available, um, but I'm going to skip to GNOME um, software later, by the way. Notifications are saved here in this area. So just so you know that. Uh, then Calculator, which is the GNOME Calculator. Um, this is the one app that I uh, actually forgot to build in the new GNOME 338 version. So that looks the same here or even worse uh, and, and yeah basic mode works fine but um, if you're just saying oh why I'm a financial professional um, well that one doesn't scale properly yet I'm sure that's going to come in a later version then calendar this is GNOME calendar and it hasn't been uh, adjusted for the phone screen at all so uh, you have to scale it with scale to fit, which Manjaro did here by default. And I'm um, look it can still try to show you some of the. Yeah, okay, I could add something here, but can I also? Is that the correct button? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to use. Um, here, look, that's one. Uh, calendar item I created earlier, which is write and publish Linbits, my weekly update. And I put a note here that I shouldn't forget as much as I did this week. So calendar works and also the GNOME calendar generally shows you the shows you some weather information. Now calendar really is a pain point and it isn't better in uh, GNOME with GNOME 338 um, yet. So the best option, I think, is using uh, well, a site from maybe uh, the calendar that UbiPort has, which could be installable on Manjaro too, because Manjaro makes, again, Plasma and um, Lomiri and Fosh, so you can pick and choose. Uh, is here this uh, calendar written for Plasma Mobile called Calendari, which is quite nice and mobile friendly. but then that one wouldn't uh, sync with Nextcloud just like that because it has all these different uh, Plasma backends and yeah, that's a pain. Now chess is just a simple chess game. I'm not even gonna bother. Well, maybe I can. Oh, there's no chess engine <laughs> uh, installed. So that makes it pretty useless. So I suppose the manager of team should add a chess engine here. Clocks is the clocks app and yeah, currently it looks like that. Uh, I built the new version of it on my other Pine phone so that you can get a better idea of what you may receive in no November. It has been reworked a bit. And yeah, so that's mainly optical, but I think it looks better now and uh, it should have, should be working better as well. So just see if that okay now before I had to go here apparently for that yeah now we can search for city so they they changed a bit about the UI but then again having an alarm clock is still an unsolved problem with power management so don't rely on the pine phone as a wake-up device don't expect to rely on that at least next up we have a document viewer, um, but first let me go to Nemo here and see if I can access the files in my next cloud because I uh, couldn't put any on this image before first boot. So it um, uh, doesn't look like it. That's, uh, well, maybe I, I can still try to open a file here. 
an xcloud by going into because this might be a different software that might be nautilus actually and not nemo by the way pm as pmos boot is my post market os install yeah uh no dice here apparently so but this is events and it, it works. Uh, you're going to have to trust me on this for this video. I can also show it later to you when I do a, an Unbox video by uh, request. Now Firefox. This is desktop Firefox. Um, you can't just build Firefox for Android because that one uses all different frameworks and well the, some many people were quite unhappy with uh, what became of what was called for a long time Firefox Preview and is now just Firefox. So yeah, and um, it has been uh, adjusted a bit for being uh, mobile friendly. And here that's my blog. And let's try the app list Linma Webs. I have to put some more work in because it's not mobile friendly as you can see here but it has some apps frameworks okay those don't work apparently and the app list is still loading yeah it has some 165 of entries currently and links to other app lists so that might be something if you're wondering whether there is an app but it's not perfect this list and uh, I think it needs different rating systems one for works and one for scales properly at least uh, and so on but uh, there is a project on the way for that um, now flashlight well I think that's enough of a demo right it works um, Fractal is a matrix client which doesn't support end-to-end -end encryption and I'm not gonna like log in on there. It generally works. Uh, you can add end-to-end -end encryption with a layer called Pantalaimon, which is um, doc well, configuration of that is documented in the Mobi and Wiki. So yeah, that's a task you can figure out, I think. And then here that's Kiri and it uses GNOME Keyring 2 and it's not um, I, I, I won't log in into any email here because, well, I haven't set up a test mailbox yet. That doesn't leak anything of my private info. And, um, but I'm, I'm going to do that from one of my next videos, I think. Um, now, Giri scales properly and it works. It doesn't work on every distribution like that, but on Manjaro and Arch and Mobian it does. Now, Gnote is a note-taking note-taking tool, and it's a bit hard to open uh, the existing notes here. But it's relatively easy to create a note, new note. So let's enter test just testing. Because that's what we're doing here, and now it shows up there and. I really don't know how to open this. Maybe like this? No. Well, I actually prefer uh, PG bin or GNOME nodes, but uh, that's another topic. Um, then image viewer. This is the eye of GNOME image viewer, and because uh, I can't access the files on my next cloud, I can't really show you an image right now. But let me just quickly skip here to megapixels. I can now take a picture my other pine phone and now I should be able to show you how that picture looks in megapixels uh, in image viewer and let me open Nemo again go to pictures and try something like a double click here and there's picture it doesn't scale properly yet um, but uh, I think by 
November once uh, GNOME 338 will have dropped. Um, you will have the newer version of this and where is it? There. There you go. Um, that one scales properly as you can see it doesn't have some space that it goes out of the screen there and yeah so that's getting better. Let me just open picture. I really don't know what this is going to show. See that file manager dialog doesn't scale properly yet. Open. Yeah, it's it's all a bit rough around the edges still. And um, this basic stuff is pretty annoying. You can often solve it by turning around, but I can't do that with two phones, I think. Now, next up is Lollipop. Which doesn't have a collect collect collection here, and it's a music player. But I don't really listen to music, so I don't know anything about that. But I think it's pretty featureful, so people have been raving about it. It has party mode, and yeah, let's see. Can we start that party mode? Because of course we want to get that party started. Don't we? Um, nope. And by the way, if you're thinking I'm not listening to anything, uh, I'm a huge podcast listener and I've got so many podcasts that I uh, can spend all the time <laughs> in the world with that. And here are some background services you can use for Lollipop. So. Let's allow network access here and oh, it can do YouTube. Yeah, I should have used that before properly, but yeah, it doesn't come pre-installed everywhere and I didn't really. Oh, let's try suggestions. Oh, huh? no. Hmm. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. <laughs> well. Popular albums. No items to show. Hmm. Web. Missing YouTube DL. Well, yeah. Um, so you can set up YouTube DL and then do that. Now, Maps is an app I know more about. And Maps is an app that I will have to show you on the other pine front too. And that's because as you can see here the items, uh, the menu items are really small and I accidentally started something. Yeah. So um so it's sort of usable, but that's those are really small touch targets here and that makes it hard to use. But with GNOME 338. This has been getting a lot better, as you can see here. Uh, it's now mobile friendly, and you can just like search for a place. Oh, what about Berlin? I don't know. If only I could type right. Berlin. <laughs> okay, I searched for Berlin. Japan lays in Sweden. Um, yeah, nice. Learned something about the world there. And this is the satellite image view. It has night mode now and other features, but uh, some stuff doesn't really uh, work that great currently here. The navigation view, for example, doesn't scale properly yet. Um, so there's some more work to do, but at least um, what you may be getting in November will be better than this, which is great. So, next up, podcast. This is the GNOME podcast app and it doesn't have a podcast directory. Um, and I don't think it has in a new version. I heard it would have on the desktop, but 
I tried that on the Pine phone and uh, I couldn't really uh, get that to work, but let me just quickly get it. Let's just close the Maps app and the browser. Yeah, look here, uh, it works. So, yeah. You just have to find out the feed URL and then put that in there and enjoy. Now, power supply is uh, something you're not going to use all that much, I think, because it just shows some graphs and apparently starting all that apps caused a hang. So, yeah, they call it alpha software and apparently they do so for a reason. So, um, can I fix this? Power supply, so maybe I didn't even start it properly, so that might be my fault. So, yeah, here, uh, that's what it shows. It shows whether it's charging and so on, and whether the charger is connected, and type C stuff. So, that's rather boring. Also, it shows you current power use, which is quite high right now because we've got the display on. And 4G and Wi Fi and Bluetooth is all on. So, it and a SD card is in the device because Mandara is running out of from that SD card here. Yeah, that makes it slow too. So, now this is a settings app which has settings for like enabling mobile data. So, I'm not going to do here. Uh, enabling Bluetooth, choosing devices, adding devices. You can use um, headphones, Bluetooth headphones with this. That works, but then after five minutes it will go into standby and maybe you will have to reconnect. So there are, don't expect to listen to music to, with this on, on the go yet. Uh, and then notifications. Uh, search. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's the, the search that you can search for stuff. Humans applications is the list of the applications that are installed here. And online accounts is where I just added my little account there and then we also have default applications, date and time, where you can for example set the time zone and it's by default set to UTC, which in my opinion is the same setting. Um, but I will just set it to Berlin time. Yeah. And a board about tells you the current version, so it says it's GNOME and 3.36.6, so not yet 3.8. Next is GNOME software. Let's go shopping. And this is where you can uh, update your uh, operating system and find new software. And if you add FlatUp, you can also search for FlatUp flatpacks, which I would recommend, despite many people are, oh no, FlatUp, it takes so much space. But uh, seriously, um, if you want the applications, it's the easiest way. Um, but on Manjaro or Arch, you can easily build them yourself without installing a ton of dash dev packages. So, yeah, you can choose whatever you want to do there. Um, let's just search for Morph and see if that works here on Arch. Hmm. Apparently, search does not really seem to work there, but yeah. I'm honestly uh, more a fan of the terminal anyway. And I think if you really despise the po terminal, you maybe should hold off this and wait a little. This is a sound recorder. Um, and well, that one also has been redesigned quite a bit for um, 3.2. 38. It fits the screen now and has a different UI. I don't know why there is no bar. I think that's a glitch maybe because I compiled this a couple of days ago. Um, but 
generally uh, this uh, is working just fine and then you can see this here and let's save that and you can see the microphone is generally okay so people do understand you on a call calls aren't perfect no pine phone can't expect HD audio or stuff but um, I had some calls in quiet environments I must admit but people could understand me and I could understand them so talk to my brother for like 30 minutes in a row so it isn't that terrible as some people may tell you but they may just be using a distribution where it doesn't work at all now telegram desktop um, yeah it works on the phone too and it's pretty much fine I think as a telegram client so that's one you might if you're a telegram user you can use that or you can use telegram with chats and then now we only have got four apps left happily uh, and that is the terminal well nothing special there although I would always recommend to go down to 80% here and then let's just try to install something and that would be wait let's just try move browser browser get to demo how you can install software that isn't made for this mobile oh yeah I forgot something there most important part well not the most important part but I forgot the dash s what happened there so brings a ton of dependencies because of course it's queued up uh, for built for UB ports so as you can see there's Lomiri teams and Ubuntu UI extras and stuff like that but let's just keep that running here while we open gedit which is also just fine um, it really scales well already and has been adjusted maybe it was an easy, easy one but it's it's nice so it's great to have that to do is gnome to do and it doesn't scale properly I think I once used it on a distribution in those past uh, three months by now because I got my pine phone in late September where that worked and scaled properly but I can't find that again so maybe maybe it was on pure OS and uh, the purism guys fixed it but it didn't go upstream now then let's go into usage and see how much this is tasking the CPU terminal and system processes I think system processes here are Pac-Man that's really uh, doing quite a bit yeah so with that in mind let's just wait for this to finish hopefully it will be done soon loaded quick when I first tried this Manjaro with Fosh Alpha 4 yesterday but yeah that's the software that comes with it for more software uh, can always have a look at the Linmob app list or the MGL app list which this has been forked off and until November there maybe will be something even better because of course this is uh, a limited thing and more software will be added or um, made ready for this form factor I'm, I'm certain of that to me the biggest gap are all these little rough edges um, a working file ex file manager um, better nextcloud files integration and um, the calendar calendar is really um, sad that there isn't one yet for Fosh but I'm sure that that will land eventually and until then you can 
maybe try Calendory. But that's working only locally for now, but you could import uh, an iCal file or something, some kind of calendar file that you may be able to export from your normal calendar and then use that for the time being. Oh, let's go to full brightness here, by the way. And yeah, you can't really dismiss those notifications other by by clicking them. Oh, this should open GNOME software at the right screen, and it does. So let's see and wait for the Morph browser to be installed. And that looks quite good. So it should be installed. And there it is. And this is magic because it's work. It works. Yeah. There you are. That's the browser you you know from UV ports. Oh, I'm giving it an easy task with my simple block here. There we are. So thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, ask question in the comments. You can uh, follow my blog. It has an RSS feed and I'm also on Twitter at linmobblog. I am on Mastodon at linmob at fosterdon.org. And well, stay safe in this pandemic and uh, have a great week and hear you soon hopefully. Thanks for watching and bye. Goodbye.